So this beautiful piece of hardware is the Pixelbook. It's been over four months since it came out. Initial batch of reviews are almost outdated because there's been a lot of software updates that have come. So I wanted to pick one up, revisit it, and see if it's worth the starting price of $1,000 for Chrome OS. Before I jump in, I wanna give a huge shout out and thank you to the Acorn Collective for making this video possible. If you want to do crowdfunding, you've got a new idea for something you want to crowdfund, you're going to wanna to stay tuned to the end of this video. They are revolutionizing the crowdfunding platform. So pricing on the Pixel Book is, is ridiculous. I think anybody who bought one would even admit themselves it's ridiculous. It starts at a thousand bucks, so you're getting nice specs. I've got a Core i5 in here at eight gigs of RAM, but a thousand bucks, you are at Surface Laptop category. There's a ton of other Windows laptops you can get. Uh, you're talking about some MacBook pricing, some used MacBook Pros. You can get a lot of computer for a thousand bucks. What you're gonna get is still really nice. So Google's been testing Android apps and Chrome OS for a while, and it kind of became official with the Pixelbook, and you've got close to the full breadth of Google Play apps here, which are nice. Some things are still weirdly letterboxed. You get access to all those applications, which make things really easy to use and adds the functionality to the Pixelbook. But we're also gonna have a problem with that is you're getting duplicate apps. Things like Slack, for example, there's an awesome web app, and then there's the Android app, and you could use Gmail tab for Gmail, and there's a myriad of other email apps you can use. You're kind of stuck with oftentimes two separate apps or two separate icons that do essentially the same thing. That took a little getting used to. The Android apps work, and I haven't had much issue, but they don't look made to scale, obviously, for a screen of this size. What surprised me about the Pixelbook, first was battery life. I knew it was gonna be awesome, but I'm getting upwards of like 10 to 12 hours of battery life, which is crazy. In fact, in 10 days I've had it, I think I've charged it twice. I didn't even need to charge it, I just sort of out of habit charged it. And it'll charge via one of the two USB Type-C ports, which I guess is, is nice to have. Doing work on the Pixelbook, it was a little bit frustrating. Doing stuff in Slack was easy. I was able to download the Android versions of Microsoft Office and that worked really well. Did a lot of work in the Google Suite kind of stuff. What I missed was having an actual desktop experience. I know there's a local storage on here, there's a decent amount of it and there's a full file explorer. It's just not as elegant as a typical laptop. And I guess I shouldn't have expected it to be that. I found workarounds for everything, so I was able to do all of my work on the Pixelbook. This wasn't as easy as it would be on, say, a Windows PC uh, or a Mac laptop. And obviously the areas where it excels is, is in Chrome. Um, I love that you can launch Chrome apps as their own Windows and you can pin them to the dock. You get more of a desktop-esque experience. But things in Chrome, obviously, were awesome. Watching, watching YouTube videos, watching movies, browsing Technobuffer or any other websites, those kind of things were really good. And the touchscreen added to responsiveness. And of course, it's a touchscreen. It's a really high-res screen that works well. Being able to sort of scroll and just use your finger was, was certainly nice to have that option. There's still a decent amount of hinge wobble. We'll talk about the hinge a little bit more in a minute, but it was nice to have. And it was a great Chrome experience, as good as anything I got on a Windows PC or a Mac laptop. I do want to add, for extra functionality to the Chromebook, and this isn't unique to the Pixelbook, but there is Chrome Remote Desktop that lets you access a Windows PC from a Chrome browser. So if you need that, it does work pretty well. On the hardware side, there's a lot of stuff to really like about this. I love the silicon little pads on the left and right of the trackpad. It makes for a really comfortable experience. The keyboard is absolutely awesome. It's one of the best uh, laptop keyboards that I've used. Trackpad is glass and works great. The two finger scrolling through, through websites or document is really smooth, incredibly responsive. So that's nice to see here. So I talked about the, the hinge. I like that I could sort of bend it and I could watch movies. I could put it up in sort of a tent mode to show my wife some stuff I was working on. I could use it to read scripts when I'm editing videos and working on sort of things that are coming up. The added functionality of that hinge is nice. It's not unique to Pixelbook. We've seen a lot of convertible laptops that have that. But each time I use it, I'm reminded of how nice it is to sort of have that option. The bezels are huge on this. And I know the argument is that when you're holding it as a tablet, so your finger's someplace to go, but there are other convertibles with much smaller bezels that you can still use as a tablet. So I've got a hard time buying that argument. It's almost inexcusable on a laptop that costs this much. You can spec this thing up to cost about 1700 bucks. Another weird design cue, so it's incredibly thin. It doesn't weigh that much. It's been nice to put in the bag, but it's strange that when it's closed, I can still push down and click the trackpad. It's just a weird annoyance that I noticed. There are other nice things in the keyboard. We've got a button for a Google Assistant and other sort of desktop UI-esque things. Essentially things that have become your app drawer and settings are all here and sort of built right into the keyboard. 
When I bought the Pixel Book, it also came with the Pixel Book pen. And uh, I'm sure you guys probably saw Marquez's review of the Pixel Book. And when the pen first came out, it was not very useful. He had a ton of issues with responsiveness. It didn't work that well. It evidently got some software updates. So I had no issues like he had as far as responsiveness. It moved quickly when I was scrolling around the screen. Apps took advantage of what it could do. Worked really well. Uh, essentially, I just used it to see if it worked. I'm not a big pen guy. And besides that, there's nowhere to stick this thing. I was absolutely gonna lose it. It's about a hundred bucks if you wanna buy it separately if it's not bundled. I don't see the use with it. I'm not an artist. Um, it's cool, you can sort of circle stuff and it'll do Google searches with it, but I don't know. So when I got this, I initially figured I was gonna use it for like a two weeks and kind of return it and be like, ah, it was, a, it was fun to try. It is an extravagance. And there's a lot of other lower priced Chromebook options. Samsung's got some awesome choices. It's hard to say, yeah, you should spend a thousand bucks on a Chromebook. It is, like I said, not a necessity for anybody's world and, and a crazy extravagance, but I think I'm gonna keep it. I like having a computer that boots up really fast. I like not having to take out, you know, another computer at home, have this just always be at home. and be able to do almost what I need it to do. For me, boiled down to Chrome OS is good at a lot, but it's not really great at anything. What I've needed to do, I found workarounds. I like having it, but it's nice and it's worked well for me. So I'm gonna chalk this up to something I certainly don't need, something I'm really glad to have. So I wanna thank the folks at Acorn Collective for making this video possible. If you've ever like crowdfunded something, you've backed something, you probably know about crowdfunding. Maybe you tried to use it yourself. Crowdfunding are quickly sort of supplanting venture capital firms as the way entrepreneurs are getting money. But the big VC firms, there's some like dirty secrets behind it. The big one is that they're all equity backed. So that's gonna mean that they focus on projects that sort of give them the best return. And the barriers to entry are stupid high and their policies make it next to impossible for people from developing countries to get their ideas on there and potentially get their ideas turned into something real. Acorn Collective is sort of turning that entire thing on its head. So the platform is backed by blockchain technology. So you know it's going to be secure and reliable. And the, one of my favorite things about it, it's gonna be completely free for use in any country. So no matter where in the world you are, if you have an idea, you could get it funded. It's totally awesome. The early backers aren't equity holders, they're token holders. Um, so using some of the cool stuff about blockchain with cryptocurrency. Uh, their token is OAK. They're in a pre-sale right now. By the time you watch this video, it'll probably be already uh, available. We'll link to it down below. If you want to learn more about crowdfunding, you've had an awesome idea for crowdfunding, if you haven't found a platform to bring that idea to life, Acorn Collective is a really sweet way to do it. Again, we'll link to it down below. You should definitely check it out. So that, that's a pixel book. It's well-designed hardware. It's a beautiful screen for like an unnecessary amount of money. I know you guys are really interested in sort of Google's core of products. Did you guys pick one of these up? Did you try one in the store? I'd like to know what you think about it. It is definitely a polarizing computer. Yes, you can even call it. Uh, but I want to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Of course, subscribe, hit the little bell icon next to it. We got more Pixelbook videos coming up. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo.